And so uh, this morning, again, title of today's message, really, it's Relationships That Move and Power. Relationships That Move and Power. I love that little guy right there, right? I mean, he's, he's ready to move and power, but you notice he's not moving alone. Yet you notice that there's a coach and a trainer that is standing behind him and pushing him forward into the place of his destiny and of his calling. And I believe that there's a push coming in the spirit. Amen? How many of y'all are ready to be pushed today? You ready to be pushed? Hallelujah. Some of them, don't push me. I'm close to the edge. Amen. <laughs> but no, no, no. Push me. Pull me. Take me. Amen. We're going to deeper places by faith today. So again, title of the message. I, I, I kind of co-titled it, Relationships for Breakthrough. But I like the original title, title that, that Relationships that Move in Power. And if you have your Bible with you, I want to point some things out for our time and the moments of the days. But let's take a look at, at the book of Ezekiel. Book of Ezekiel, chapter 22. This is a time when Israel was in trouble. You ever get the feeling sometimes that our culture, our society is in trouble? Yes. Our country, our region, you ever get a feeling that sometimes it's in trouble? And so God puts you in a place where there's trouble. Why? Because you have an impact in the earth. That's why. Because, because we, we, he put us here for a time and a season and for a purpose. And Israel was in trouble here. Ezekiel 22, starting in verse 9. Listen to this. The people of the land had used oppressions, committed robbery, mistreated the poor and the needy, and they wrongfully oppressed the stranger. So I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But what? But I found no one. Therefore, I poured out my indignation upon them. I've consumed them with fire of my wrath and I've recompensed their deeds on their own heads, says the Lord God. Did that trouble anybody? I love opening up with a troubling scripture. I love something that just kind of stirs because this is something that just kind of burned in my A lot of times, the society, the place where we're in, the troubles that we get into is because we can't find an intercessor. We can't find wall builders. We can't find people that will stand on that wall, that will stand in the gates. And, and sometimes that's where it is. And God says, well, because of that, because there was nobody to stand, there was a great fall. Amen? Yeah, make sure this is not your house. Amen? Make sure that that is not your church. Make sure it is not your community. Make sure it is not the place where you are assigned to, to stand that falls in the place of that indignation. Amen? See that it doesn't happen in your generation. We got generations. We, we got people that we're, that we're talking to. See, it doesn't happen in your kids' generation, the next generation, the next iteration, those that are following. That our children, how many of y'all love kids? Five, six of you love kids. Amen. Amen. We're going to work on love today. Amen. We're going to learn to love our kids. You love your kids, make sure they know God. Amen. Make sure they have a familiarity with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit, with who Jesus Christ is. Amen. Amen. Teach them to worship. Teach them to pray. Teach them to rely on God and to walk by faith. And even better yet, teach them to walk by spirit. They will figure out fine how to walk by carnality, but you teach them to walk in spirit. Amen. And so we look at this and, 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 and what, what we're looking forward to in the days and in the hours that are yet ahead of us. Amen. We got to see this. Now, now, we carried some of this stuff over, but I want us to grab hold so we can all be in the same place and, and walking on the same path. I believe that there is a, a synchronization that God is doing in spiritual places. That there is a, it's, it's, a, it's a bringing it together and getting things moving together in the, the same direction. And how that happens is we're working together. How that is is that we're walking together, not in just any relationship, but in godly relationship. Amen. I could be a man who has a wife, but I'd rather be a man with a godly wife. Amen. And so we have a godly relationship because we're walking now this line together. Even when we disagree, we're still walking together in agreement. How many of y'all would love to walk in agreement with people? Man, I'll tell you, I can walk anywhere in disagreement. But only in the kingdom of God is your true agreement. Amen? Amen. We may not have it perfect yet. How many of y'all got that agreement thing down perfect? Yeah. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all are getting better? Amen. By the time I leave today, we'll be doing better. Praise God. Praise God. So we've been talking about some of the things. We've been talking about being that supernatural church and, and things that, that will provoke a movement of God. How many are ready for God to move? 
I mean, how many of y'all have, let me ask this question. I'm talking to y'all today. How many of y'all have seen God move? How many of y'all have seen a movement of God get started? And sometimes we can see a movement of God get started, but then it doesn't seem to prevail. It doesn't seem to last. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to last long. And there's reasons why movements of God, the fuse can be lit, but the firecracker never goes off. There's reasons why these things don't happen, but part of that is because of movement of God. God is moving through his people. Amen? And we have called, like Nick was saying earlier, Christ in us. But you know that we are in Christ, Christ inside of us. And so we are to be moving together in that place of synchronization with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit. That's why we have times of worship, but we are coming together in the power and the presence of God. And, and we are hearing from God, but hearing from God is not enough. Amen? So we talked about three areas in, in recent weeks. We talked about this, three areas uh, uh, that, that we need if we're going to move with an expectation that God's going to move. Number one area was the area of prayer. How many of y'all remember that? And you know what? How many of y'all came to prayer on Wednesday night? Yeah. Man, this place exploded. I was like, what church is this, man? I mean, people are, I was, they said, let us pray, and the people prayed. Hallelujah. It was so much. Of, we got like five hours of prayer into 30 minutes It was because everybody's praying about everything everywhere. But I know what? I know the ground was covered. Hallelujah. I know great things are happening. And so we're still, in some ways, still struggling in that area of prayer. I know people are struggling in their personal area of prayer life, and, and some struggle to get together and come together in a place of corporate prayer. But I'll tell you what, don't give up the struggle. Don't give up the struggle. Keep going. Keep pressing on. But I just feel so dry. Then pray dry. Amen. Pray dry until something happens. Amen. Pray for the waters of the Word of God to, be, to pour over you. Amen. And know that God has called you to this. What is prayer? It's a system of communication with the heavenly places. It's a place of communion with God. It, it, God has ordained this. This is not a man-made thing, prayer. This is a God-ordained means of communication between the earth and the heavens. Amen. And we'll get into some of this and later on in the week, but I'll tell you what, we need to be in a place, men, we got to get in a place where we're praying. Women, we got to be in a place where we are praying and we get, and we lock ourselves into that closet, but we get to that place where we are just declaring, thy kingdom come and thy will be done. That Lord, that in my house, you would be glorified. That in my business, you would be glorified. That in all things, God would be glorified. That Lord, for your will, my will will expire, but God's will will last indefinitely. Hallelujah. And those things that are connected to His will, my God, we will be blessed. Amen. My God, we will live. Hallelujah. We will be healed. We will see the answers to our dreams. We'll get new dreams. We'll get new vision. And we'll be able to operate supernaturally, regardless of what's going on in the world. Amen? Amen. Say it. Pray. Say it. Pray. Tell somebody to pray. pray. Don't pray quiet. Get loud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get up and stomp your feet and raise your hand and raise your voice. Don't worry about what people think about you. Connect with God. Amen. I'd rather have people think I'm weird and be connected to God than the people think I'm normal and I'm not connected to God. Amen. I want the connection to be real. Hallelujah. Second place we talked about was this, a movement. We need motion. In other words, faith without works is dead. Don't be hearers only, but doers of the Word of God. If you get a word in your spirit, do it. Amen. If it speaks to you, speak it back out. Make sure it is alive inside of your life. That just hearing it and, and hanging out on Sunday or different times during the week, hanging out is fun, but it's not enough. Amen. We got work to do. Amen. Amen. Are you all laborers in the kingdom of God? If Jesus Christ comes in the room, would He say that you are a co-laborer together with Him? A collaborator with Him. Can you be trusted with assignments? Are you a servant and a friend of the Most High God? These are the kinds, these are real questions, amen. And then we say, all right, that's great, but am I now operating according to my potential, my ability? Am I operating in my territory, in my assignment? Do I have these things? My God. If not, it's time to get rocking, amen. And then the third area, Michelle, was relationships, Amen. It's relate. How do you relate? You, if you're not relating, you don't have a relationship. Amen. But I'm not talking about ordinary relationships. I'm talking about relationships that move in power. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you have relationships that move in power? Do you have relationships that move in power? I think it was so powerful walking away last week and thinking about this. Do you, do you have relationships that moved in power last week? 
I'm talking from Monday till today. Did you move in power in your relationships? You guys are all afraid to say yes or no. But I'll tell you what, the answer for me is yes, I did. I had, rela- I had my relationships were moving in this past week. And I know, I'm so glad. I mean, yes, I had some that moved. I had some that wouldn't move at all. Amen. You ever try to get things going? And like, it's just not going to move at all. It's like, no, and it's like, no, no, no. Come on, let's go together. We can get this thing done. No, nah, I, no, no, no. Come on, let's pray together. Okay, I pray and you listen, right? It's like, well, no, it doesn't work like that. Come on, let's, let's, let's exercise our faith together. And I know that we can accomplish much together. Amen. Yes. And I believe that we can. I believe that if we have one heart, one mind, one vision, one motivation, and it is in the kingdom of God, great things can be accomplished, even if it's not happening in every other place. Amen? If, if it's going to have to happen, then let it start with me. Let, God gave me the vision. God gave me the dream. God gave me the word. Then I'm the one that needs to get going. Amen? Amen. And we get going. And when we get going, get going with power. We spoke last week about relationships, and I'm a few weeks behind on getting the videos out there. We'll get caught up, hallelujah. And when we do, y'all can go back and catch all the meat and grit and the details that are there. Amen. But we, like I said last week, I had some, some difficulty bringing that message forward. I had some difficulty bringing it out. And I realized that some of that was just kind of like a non-responsiveness, but there's a whole nother level of opposition. Because when you get that word from God, this, it's going to be tested. Amen. Don't you love when the test comes? You can't have a testimony unless you had a test. Amen. Because if you have a testimony without a test, it's just a testimony. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want a testimony. I want the testimony. Amen. I want to go all the way. I want to go to that next next level. But you know, you can overcome opposition. Did you notice? I'm going to let you in on a secret. You can overcome opposition. You know how you overcome opposition? With prayer. Amen. It starts in prayer, but you know what else helps me overcome opposition? Godly relationships. Godly relationships. They open doors, they close doors, they lift, they support. That when when one falls down, the Bible says that that blessed are two if they walk together because if one falls down, the other can lift him up. Do you believe that? Isn't it amazing? Sometimes I'm reading through things in Ecclesiastes. I read through the things in Proverbs and some of them are just like, duh. Like we should know that. Right? But it had to be written in the Word of God so that we would remember, so we would know we didn't come up with this, and it wasn't just some philosophy, some earthly philosophy, but it comes from God. It comes from on high. Even God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that there is a synergy that is taking place in the divine. Isn't that powerful? And so we, here we are, we're walking together. We're going into this deeper place. I'm going to give you some summary from last week. I want to just touch on this. And the first point from last week was this, about having these divine relationships, godly relationships, relationships that move in power. Number one, you must prepare. you got to prepare for those relationships. You develop yourself for powerful relationships. Amen. you got to prepare. Get ready to meet your helpers. Get ready to meet those that God is going to help you to help so that you can get the help that you need to get things done. You know, the Holy Spirit came as a comforter and a helper. And so we are to have these relationships one with another. Amen? Proverbs 18, 16 says, A man's gift makes room for him. Amen. Makes a way for him and brings him before great men. Hallelujah. How many of y'all maybe need some time where you can go and get before some great people of God? a great man, a great woman, somebody of influence. Amen. And so we have to be prepared to meet those people. We have to have a gift, something to offer. You know, and and sometimes that offer is just simply the favor of God that is on your life. Other times God has prepared a gift for you to present, but in such a way that we are ready. You know, we pray for these doors of opportunity to open, but then sometimes you will go before people of great influence, of, of, of power, of spirit, and you know, and we walk in and we're not ready to meet them, so we, it ends up being just an acquaintance, a handshake, a high five, a, 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 a flattering comment, something like that, and then we end up missing it. But I'll tell you what, that there are these times God begins to speak to you about how to get ready, 
how to prepare to meet great men and women who will come into your path. I keep coming back to you, Nick, because we talked about this. God brought you before some very powerful people in, 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 in the industries out here. And, and so I'll tell you what, they will remember you. Amen. You have sown the seed. Hallelujah. And when you have a need... Pick up the phone, call, be bold, exercise your faith, and watch the doors that will open over your life. Amen. That goes for any number of us. And get ready for something greater. Amen? Amen. How many of y'all ready for something greater? Yeah. Yeah. Second point was this, to invest, to build relationships. Build relationships that move in power. You know, Bible tells us, Proverbs 18, 24, that a man who has friends must himself be friendly. That you, you, got, you got to be friendly. You got to put some things out there. And you invest into those relationships. Don't you love it when people build relationships with you just for the stuff that they can get out of you? Those aren't your friends. How many times? Don't make your friends. Those are not your friends. But we have to be able to enter into relationships selflessly. That the, the currency, we talk about the currency. Currency is faith, but it's also love. Currency. Relationships are currency in the kingdom of God. It's a way to get some things done. But you yourself must be friendly. You yourself have got to be there and loving and representing the Lord Jesus Christ both in the kingdom and outside of the kingdom. That there are people that are going to come your way. And I'll tell you what, when, when, in, in times of trouble, they'll be back around. I was thinking about this week. It's crazy. Some of the people that I've invested a decade into, a decade and a half into, and just, just keep loving them. Just keep talking to them. Just, just, just keep, when, when the doors are open, step through them. Just keep doing it. And I'm watching now, all of a sudden, I got friends that are influential and that can help me. Some are, are Christian, some are non-Christian, but they respect, they respect my God. They respect Christianity. They, they, they know they've been watching and seeing. And so there's an investment that happens in those relationships. Amen? I mean, don't, don't just get turned off by people. I mean, you know, sometimes, I'll tell you what, sometimes God will put really annoying people in your life. How many of y'all got some annoying people in your life? Yeah. If they're with you, don't look at them. Don't, don't, be, don't poke them. Be like, that's you. You're annoying. But I'll tell you what. Sometimes you need to go get something or you, you, know, you, need, to, you, you need to make a point. You got to get something. You need to enlist some annoying people to go out there and get the things that you need. Then people become annoyed with them, but they still like you. You see how that works? <laughs> Amen. Amen. I saw, I saw what y'all was doing over there too. It was like, you're the annoying one. No, you are. No, you are. I saw that. But I'll tell you what. That, 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 <laughs> he is. He is. He's got the gift. <laughs> that's, his, that's his gift. The spiritual gift of annoyance. Amen. Amen. But yeah, yeah, but, 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 but just think about it. This, this, is, this is kingdom in operation. This, this is the fire of God burning that is, that is uniting people together. There are people that you don't like, people that you may not get along with, but that's why Jesus tells us to love your enemies. That's why he says to pray for those who spitefully use you because God says you might be done with them, but I'm not. I still have things that I could do. There is gold in there. And so what we have to do is to mine out that gold. Amen. And to do it with, and the big word for today is love. You really have to do it with love. Don't people, some people just hate love. It's, it's amazing. But that's because they're damaged. It's because they are disconnected from God who is love. Amen. And so when we begin to minister in love, we minister by love and by faith. It is the greater way. Right? 1 Corinthians 12 tells us that there is a better way, and that better way is love. Amen. Practice love. Learn to be loving. Learn to be lovable. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then the other point to touch, I won't spend a little time here because this is where I just didn't finish it last week. I really feel something powerful taking place here. But the last one is to be transformed. Transform, become Christ like in your relational engagements. Become Christ-like in your relational engagements. And I think that this is something like, amazing. It's like I can build friendships, partnerships, and relationships. But, you know, Romans 12 tells us that we must not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of our minds. We prove what is the good, the acceptable, perfect will of God. Amen. And so what happens is I can get into a relationship. So, well, what would Jesus do in this relationship? And it's really not a far stretch to figure that out. You know why? Because he's in you and you are one with him. 
that you give him an opportunity. God's going to talk you, talk to you about how to talk, what to, what to do, how to sow, how to reap everything that you need. But one of the biggest things that Christ does, has done, and continues to do is to bring us into deeper relationship with him. And I know a lot of times we talk about having a relationship with Jesus, right? People say we need to have a relationship with Jesus. We don't like religion, but we want relationship. You all heard these things before, and I know I've jumped on them a few times, but let me tell you something, that you can't have a relationship unless you can relate. And a lot of times what people call religion is our relationship with God. And so we have to be able to sort through all these things. We've got to be able to sort through. Jesus is not a mere human being. Do you know that? That he is gone on high. Hallelujah. That he is the firstborn of many brethren. And so we come into this place of unity. We come into a place of alignment with him. If you've got your Bible with you, let's take a look at this John chapter 15. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Very, very powerful. And think of this in terms of relationship. Think about this in terms of being Christ-like in our relationships. Verse 12, he says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Have you been loved by Jesus? Anybody here, you've not yet been loved by Jesus. We'll pray for you and you'll get it today. Hallelujah. But he's saying, love others like I've loved you. Amen? And then he says in verse 13, Greater love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. And he says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. Amen? Now, I know some bossy people that are like that. You're my friend if you do what I want you to do. Right? But I don't know what Jesus is saying here at all. What he's saying is, I will lay down my life for you if you come under my commandments. If you come under godliness, then my life is laid down for you. Do you see that? That's relationship building on the Christ level. You come into the kingdom of God and we can have a relationship on this particular level. To move into our relationships for today, if we come under his commandments, which means to come into his, his direction, it's, it's coming under his instruction, then our relationship moves from being a, 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 a servant, a simple servant, an obedient servant, to being an ally of Christ. Amen? Are you all tracking with me on this? This is some good stuff right here, I'll tell you. I will amen myself all the way to the bank today. I got energy today, praise God, praise God. But you're moving in a relationship from being an employee of God to being an ally or a partner of God. You're moving into this, this, a, a whole different direction. Jesus continues here in verse 15. He said, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what the master is doing. Right? In other words, servant relationship is really low. Right? I know. To be a servant of God, it's a high thing, but it's low in comparison. He says, but now I've called you friends for all the things I've heard from my Father, I have made known to you. All right? So in other words, watch, what, watch what's taking place here. Instead of the Holy Spirit coming to you and telling you, I want you to do one, two, three, and four, and check back with me in the end of the week. He's saying, this is the will of the Father. It's the will of the Father that these things happen. And your response is, great, I'll go do it. Your response is, you know, I don't need step-by-step -step instruction, but if I know the vision, if I know the heart of God, if I know what the end is going to be, I don't need step-by-step -step instructions. I go and do what the Father would have me do. Jesus said, I only do the things that the, I see the Father do, and now we do what we see Jesus do. Amen? And so we, it, it's, it's, it's operating on a different level altogether. And so he says, uh, verse 16, you did not choose me, but I choose you and appointed you that you should go out and bear fruit. What's that saying? That you will go out and be successful. That you, what you're setting your hands to, what you're setting your mind to, I chose you and I appointed you for success. You were not chosen by God for failure. You were not chosen by God to receive a grade of C in the kingdom of God. But you are to be an A-plus student and producer. You're going to be in the top 10 sales producers for the kingdom of God because He has chosen you for the reward. He's already got your name on the plaque. You haven't done it yet, but in faith. In faith. Your, your, your name is in the book. Amen. My name is written in the book. Praise God. Don't tear my page out, God. Amen. And it's not only that you should bear fruit, but watch that next phrase, and that your fruit should remain. Yes. That your fruit should remain. 
Or in other words, you're not going to do it for a minute. That this fruit will be everlasting. That it will have impact generation to generation to generation. It doesn't stop with you. It rem- Even when you pass away, the fruit continues. Wouldn't you like to have a garden? Gladys, wouldn't you like to have a garden that keeps planting itself year after year? You know, it's just like, uh, would you? This is a beautiful garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that five years ago. And it's grown and it increases. And now my sons take care of it. You know, my daughter, they take care of it now. But it's going generation to generation. I, I, I find that so, so powerful. And he says, your fruit would remain that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. He says, and these things I command you, what? That you love one another. I mean, all of that boils down to love. Not caring about you, but loving you. But operating in love. Move in love. Move in love. You move in power. Amen? Your purpose in Christ. I love this. It's not to produce something that expires in 24 hours. It's the things you will accomplish in your life. It won't be lost. It won't expire in time. Go and bear fruit. Tomorrow, go out and bear some fruit. Amen. Today, you can do that. And I, and I was reading it, and it hits me on so many different personal levels. It's personal to me. It's great when I see my next generation picking up the, the torch and carrying and walking by their own faith. Amen. It, it's great. And so we, we so relational. As a parent does down to a child, but it's not just a parent down to a child. It's like I am building relationships with people that I'm ahead of in my walk and they're coming in from behind. And what I'm doing is I'm sowing into them. You know, the kingdom of God. How do you come into the kingdom of God? I come in as an apostle. No. You come in as a baby. You're a baby. And you go through the stages of growth and maturity, and now you are sowing. I call it iterationally because I don't want to be confused, but but I I sow into somebody who's coming in, and then they grow up and they mature into things of God, and then they sow it into other people. Like Paul said to Timothy, teach others who are able to teach others. I, I have taught you. I've given you everything I have. May God grant you understanding. And when you have that, give it away. Don't worry. But my fruit, my fruit, Timothy, your fruit will remain. It's, one of the, it's, it's the economy of the kingdom of God. It's like the woman who had the, the vessels and those filled with oil. Keep pouring the oil out. Don't worry. The vessel's going to stay full. Keep pouring it out. Look at somebody around and say, you got something in your vessel? Pour it out. Pour it. So, you know, strength of relationship is when we encourage one another. And anybody that's in this room at some point when somebody is drying out and they're like, I just can't. And you, got, you have permission to just look at them and go, pour it out. Pour, what, you, what you got in your vessel? Pour it out. Pour it out. Trust God. He'll fill you back up. Amen. Amen. I'm a vessel of the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, one of the strategies of the enemy is that when you have determined to follow God, when your will is unbendable, when you're walking in covenant relationship with God and your will is unbend, unbendable, the enemy's tactic it was to keep you so focused on the task that you forget that one day you won't be there. To get you so busy that you forget that this thing has to keep going. You know, and then, then what happens is the, the movement. God gives you a movement. He gives us a movement, but he's going to give you a movement. And what will happen is, and when you're not passing that on to that next generation or on to that next person, then when you die, that movement dies with you. Or worse. You're alive, and the movement died in you. But to get this thing, and this is one of the enemy's tactics, to wear you out. We talked about the Pharaoh spirit. Remember Pharaoh? The Pharaoh said, well, we're going to go three days into the wilderness, and we're going to worship our God. And, and, and Pharaoh said, great, get your own straw, keep making bricks, and you better not drop one. I'll keep you busy until you lose your focus, and I'll wear you out. That is one of the tactics of the enemy. Don't lose focus. Stay focused in. Amen? And Wednesday night we're talking about relationships that produce movements. The undying fruit that was in 1 Thessalonians. Very, very powerful study. How many of you was Wednesday night? Was it weak? Was it a boring study? Was it worth your time to get there? I mean, come on. This is, this is some strong things that the Lord is speaking for this generation. And Paul's talking about a nurturing uh, relationships. He's talking about co-laboring relationships. He's talking about commanding and releasing relationships that are moving things powerfully in, the nat- in our realm, in this earth realm, but it's stuff that will go forward perpetually. 
And so we see that Paul's relationships, that they were producing these relationships as, uh, like he called to, onto Timothy. What did he call Timothy? Son Timothy. I send son Timothy to you. He knows me. You know him. You know that what I got, he's got. He's got enough dose of the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul doesn't need to be there because he's there with Timothy. Amen. Talking about the, 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 the peer relationships, that they were all out there together. Teamwork. Amen. Talking about teamwork in the kingdom of God. Paul was never about I. He was all about we. We did these things. We were there for you. To, to, to get back into, into that part. You know, he was talking about a, a team. Teamwork came together to establish a church in a hostile city. And the church is thriving. It's an entire movement that was taking place and lasting at Thessalonica. Very powerful. And it was all done by relationship. Amen. By God-driven relationship. And now we're talking about relationships that move in power. My God. I, I keep thinking about them, thinking all the times you think that it's all, and you got to do all these things. But if you can come together with somebody who's got your rhythm, if you get with somebody who's got the vision, and you're running together, how much more can be done and accomplished? How much can you overcome? I know people that are stuck in a rut. They're frustrated. They're depressed. They're, they're lost in their thinking. They're at this place, but they're, they're running this race alone and not utilizing the relationships that are around them. We need this. We need this. Remember, um, Elijah, I, they killed all the prophets. I alone am all that is left. Whoa, poor is me. And God said, you have no idea. I've got all these guys in the back cave who have never bent their knee to Baal. But God said, you know, I understand. I understand what you're going through. I understand that kind of loneliness because I'll tell you that when I was looking for an intercessor, I couldn't find one. You know, he's, he's having this dialogue. And then he said, but you know what? Do what I told you to do. I'm going to send you an Elisha. I'm going to send you a son. I'm going to send you somebody who will walk with you. We think that was three weeks. No, it was, it was like more like 40 years they walked together. Yeah. That was, a, that was a, a, a big relationship. And then what happened in Elisha's ministry overshadowed everything Elijah did. And Elijah did a lot. Yeah. But man, Elisha came out, boom, what are we going to do? Who needs a miracle today? Let's go find a woman who, who, who needs their son raised from the dead. I mean, just think about these kinds of things. It's like, that's, that's working together. You know, that's a great example of a godly relationship. The Shunammite woman. And he said, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. I, I, they're going to take my son away. We ain't got no money. And, 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 and Elijah said, well, let's, let's do something with your oil. Oh, but now the son had died, and now I have no future. And Elisha said, I'll go raise him from the dead. So she knew she could call on him. Why? How did she know she could call on this prophet? Everybody wants to touch the prophet, right? Why, Why should he come? Because she made a room for him and made a bed for him, and she cooked for him. And whenever he came to town, she made sure that the man of God was cared for. And so he felt not just obligated. He felt, he felt it was like his own child. This boy. That's, a, that's, that's godly relationships. Amen. That, that, these are relationships we can have here on the earth. Powerful relationships. Amen. Amen. So I'll tell you this. I want to shift back in, a little bit here. Some of these relationships that, that, that move in power. I want to shift back to the movements of God. The movements for this day. You know, God desires for us to have relationships that release and sustain his movements in the earth. He desires us to have relationships that do that. And, and look, you get that quote up there? Beautiful. Abe, you're on time. My man. Godly relationships help us to overcome limiting factors to movements of God. Yeah. There are limiting factors to the movements of God in the earth. We said this earlier. I was telling you there are things that will put the fire out. There are things that will get in the way. And we all experience these kinds of things in our what? Because this, it will be tested. There will be times of testing and trial, internal, external. Some of it's flesh, some of it's demonic, some of it's God. But there will be that testing that takes place. And, and, he, and, and when God was revealing this to me a few weeks ago, he's saying, but these godly relationships will help you to overcome. Let me put that in a, in a, in a package for you. Challenges are going to come. Hardships will come our way, but the relationships he's speaking to us about building, preparing for, maintaining, transforming for, that these things will be a weapon in our hand to overcome these limiting factors. Amen. We're talking about some of these things today. Let's talk about the first one, busyness 
and distraction. How many of y'all are busy people? How many of y'all are distracted people? Yeah, okay, we'll put the distractions aside. Let's go for something deeper, amen. You know, already I talked about Pharaoh and you know, the tactic that he used about, about making them use straw. You know, as, as you're walking through, he said, here, here, I'll, I'll make you also do, uh, get your own raw materials for, for, for the things that you have to do. And so a lot of times what's going to happen in your life, you're like, I'm ready to move out. I'm going to go and do what God has called me to do. How many of y'all have been in that place? And then immediately all this work just comes and starts hitting you. Boss is calling you up, telling me, yeah, we need you to work overtime. We're going to need you to, you know, the bills are too high. I need to go get me a second job. And, and you know, but I'm going to go out, God, I promise you, as soon as I get these bills paid, and the devil says, ooh, all I have to do is keep throwing bills at them. All, all I have to do to hold them down is, is keep it. And, and these are the kinds of things that we walk into, right? I mean, it's, it's a challenge, right? And, 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 and the, the interesting thing is this. This is where your relationships come in place. Because somebody can come and say alongside a brother or sister who's walking in the Lord, a spiritual leader, even somebody who is following you on a spiritual level, and go, why are you so busy? I'm not sure you're actually accomplishing the things that, that God wants you to do. All right? Now, this is, this is your, your, your instant carnal reaction. Are you ready? What do you want me to do? There's only so many hours in the day. You don't understand all the problems that I have. You know? And then you're like, well, and you're the one that said that I could do all things through Christ who gives me strength. You know, and, uh, you, know you, you can't get up there and preach all of that and talk all of that and you ain't walking it out. And, and, and you know, well, you don't understand. I'm, I'm defeated in this area. So, oh, I don't want to follow a defeated leader. <laughs> you know, defeat is not. When was God defeated? Never. never. And, you know, he's had some pretty good challengers out there. Amen. But right. well, he has never lost a battle and he never will. Amen. He's controlling. People say, aha, I got him. And God said, you ain't got nobody. That's right. You ain't got nobody. You want to hear another tactic of the enemy? And this, this, is, this is kind of spooky. It comes back to Pharaoh, right? And, and if you read back through the book of Exodus, right, there was a, the plague of the hail. And after the plague of the hail, Pharaoh reluctantly says, I will let the men go to worship. I'll let the men of Israel go to worship. But he says, you have to leave the children behind. Right? He said, yeah, you, know, who, we, you remember the story? He's like, okay, you, you know, Pharaoh's like frustrated, okay. Uh, but, well, who's going to go? Who, who's going? Um, well, we all going. We're going to take our, our women, the kids, the, the donkeys, the cows. I mean, everybody's going to worship God. Man, I wish we had that spirit. And like, who's going to go? The dogs are going to come worship God today. You know, the horses are going to go. We're all going to, to worship God out in the wilderness. You know, and you look at that, and Pharaoh says, not so. Men can go. Kids stay home. What happened? What did he know? He knows that if you don't raise up that next generation, the movement dies with you. He, he, he knows. He knows. I'll be patient. 20 years, 20 years, and I can dominate this whole platform because you didn't raise the kids up in it. Bible says train them up in the way they should go. And when they grow old, they will not depart from it. And that, that's what I'm saying, man. Didn't you love during praise and worship when the kids were screaming in the back of the room? I'm like, they're praising according to how they know. You know, don't worry about it. Train them up in the way that they should go. This is the time we raise our hands, right? This is the time we fold them and get quiet. This is the time for you to go to kids' church, you know? But there's that time, and, and, and watching how these realities work. Amen? Devil was trying to play chess with God. And you know what God's response is? Release the locust then. But God has not given up on your next generation. God will not give up on the next generation, so we should not give up. And, and by the way, God living into the next generation is living through this one. Now, you ain't got to be a mother or a father to understand this. You don't have to have children to operate inside of this release, inside of this paradigm. We pray for the next generation. We interact with the next generation. We build them up. We discipline them, but we build them up in the things of God. We release, we comfort, we encourage, and, and we charge them that you can do better. You can do more. This is what lies in your future. Yeah. Well, sometimes, man, people think I'm, I'm being mean. I'm not being mean to a kid. I'm setting boundaries on a kid. Don't worry. I'll let the boundaries down later. But initially... There's a lesson to be learned and to be imparted, you know, and that's been part of the strategy. Part of the strategy, raising up kids godly is discipline the things that are ungodly, but reward the things that are godly. 
You have got to make a distinction. That was an ungodly thing. And so we have to deal with that. But don't worry, when you get it right, there's a reward. Why? Because that's the reality of the kingdom of God. That's training them up in the way that they should go. Amen? Don't be like, uh, you know, I was thinking about this. I'm like, I didn't even set my timer today. Y'all messed me up. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but just, just thinking about, you know, these things. Look at, look at Ephesians uh, 6, 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. In other words, don't point them in the wrong direction. Point them in the right direction. Amen. Bring them up in the training and the admonition of the Lord. Show them the way. Teach them how to walk it out and be there with them. Bring them with you. You know, I know we come out to prayer sometimes and, and want to bring a kid to prayer, but the kid's going to be too distracted. Teach them not to be a distraction, but bring them to prayer. Amen. Go outside and pray because go outside and play because mommy wants to pray now. No, bring that kid inside and teach them to pray. Teach them that there's a time to play games. There's a time to act up, but there is a time to get into the presence of God. That, I'll tell you, I spent years, years as a children's minister, years as a youth pastor, and we used to try to work and pull these youth groups together, and then that one parent would teach them, you're punished today, you're not going to youth because you've been bad. What did you just teach them? You taught them to run from the house of God when they have been bad. Teach them to repent and to celebrate God. I'll tell you, I'll tell you it's, it's a, it makes a difference. Amen? Amen? Go after the deeper things of God. And teach others. Remember who's coming by. Don't be coming, who's coming behind you. Don't be so busy that you forget to raise your next generation. Amen? Don't be so distracted by work or by play or by hobbies that you forget to raise up your next generation. I got sub points, but I love them too. I'll, I'll, I'll put them out later. Actually, go to my Facebook. I already posted them. Godly relationships help godly mothers and fathers stay focused and on track. I'll say it again. Godly relationships help godly mothers and fathers stay focused and stay on track. If I am in a place where I have a godly relationship with mothers and fathers and your kids are out of whack, my relationship allows me to speak up. Now, you might get mad, okay? You might be like, that's it. You're, you're, you're judging me. Okay, but at some point you realize that was a statement of love. I love you and your kids too much to let your house turn to a hellhole because we aren't raising them correctly. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. So the first point there uh, uh, of these limitations, busyness and distraction, do not let busyness and distraction choke out a move of God in your life. That's that Mark chapter 4, the sowing of the seeds that go into the thorny soil. That's choking out the life of a movement of God. Number two, fear. Fear will stop a move of God in its track. Amazing. Nowhere in the Bible does it show that the move of God of the supernatural church was, was gripped in fear. A move of God in a supernatural church that is gripped with fear will never see a movement of God unless it's the fear of the Lord. A holy, righteous fear. A fear of what doesn't happen if we don't move. That kind of a holy and righteous fear. But I'll tell you, if we're so afraid, afraid of what people are going to think about us, or afraid of retribution, afraid of, of, of missing out, what do they call that, the fear of missing out, those kinds of things. Well, I, I go to church, I'm going to miss out on these other things, right? I pursue the things of God, I'm going to miss out on the fun, you know? And so no, don't be afraid. You cannot operate by that kind of fear. Throughout the Old Testament and in the book of Acts, those cities may have been gripped in fear. The believers sought the Lord with boldness and with expectation. Yeah. Intimidation was a work of the enemy. Remember, they, they killed James, and they were going to kill Peter, but they prayed, and they, and, they were, and they were bold in their place of, of prayer. And so God sent an angel and set Peter free, and that only encouraged them to keep pressing on with the deeper things of God. There are, there are stories where, where uh, the apostles and the early church were beaten for the sake of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they came out and they rejoiced. And they said they counted themselves blessed so that they were counted worthy to suffer for the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, that's a move that can't be stopped. Can't be stopped by intimidation. You know, in the Old Testament, that, that when, the, when the, the people of God were bold, when the churches were bold, God responds by raising up prophets, judges, kings. In the New Testament, Christ came 
And then you know, we're not we're not afraid. We're gonna keep we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pray to God and, and I know that He's gonna deliver us from Rome. And what happens? King Jesus steps up on the scene. Amen. Amen. Following him, what? Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Following that, the Holy Spirit shows up and the Spirit-filled church begins to move in power. Don't be gripped in fear. Be gripped in power. Amen. Move in the power of the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 13.5. Let's take a look at that right quick. Don't, Don't flip there. Just write it down. But the apostle writes here, let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. How many of y'all believe that God said he will never leave you or forsake you? He said it to Joshua. He said it to David. And I'll tell you what, he says it through the word of God to us. But he shows us how to walk in the statement, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He says in verse 6, so we boldly say, the Lord is my helper. What? The Lord is my helper. We talk about helpers. And it'll sometimes it'll come in human form. It's God working through them that will come. And he says, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Yeah. I serve God. What can man do? What's the worst thing that could happen? They killed me. Great, I'm in heaven. <laughs> right? I mean, and if, but, but they could torture me. Yes, but my reward in heaven is greater. You don't, you don't understand. And I'm following the things of God. But what if they torture you and it's got nothing to do with Jesus? I trust Jesus to be my rock and my shield. I, I trust that God will be my defender in, in these cases. So we, we, we have to move forward with that kind of a boldness. You know, sometimes people are gripped in fear because they don't pray. But if we pray biblical prayers, if we are praying right out of the Word of God, it builds a boldness that will stand against fear every single day of your life. Amen. We know the word, the Lord spoke to Joshua, be strong and courageous. He said, be strong and courageous, and I will never leave you nor forsake you. He didn't just say, I'll never leave you. He said, be strong, be bold, be courageous, be filled with courage, and I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So sometimes we feel abandoned by God, but we got we to gotta buckle up. we got to stand and be courageous. we got to find courage. And God is like, yeah, I can work with this. Amen? Trust God on this thing. And David says this in 1 Chronicles 28. He says to Solomon, be strong and of good courage. I like this. Watch this. Y'all watching this? Be strong and of good courage and what? Do it. it. Be strong of good courage and move. Step out. Get something accomplished. He said, do not fear nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, my God, will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you until... Until you have finished all the work for his service in the house of the Lord. That doesn't mean he's leaving when the work is done. It means get busy with the work and God is with you. Amen? Each one of these instruments, we see it's, it's the presence and the help of the Lord is being connected to service towards God. The help and the presence of God being connected to our service towards God. And Hebrews, we looked at Hebrews 13 there. The promise is meant to embolden the servant of the Lord to break timidity, and to break hesitation. And hesitation is one of the things that stops works of God right in its, right in its tracks. Godly relationships offer assurance, comfort, and it encourages bold, boldness. Godly relationships, you can write that one down, it offers assurance, comfort, and it encourages boldness. Amen? Hallelujah. Y'all being blessed by this? That's good, because i got one point left to go. You ready? I'll move, I'll move through it. I promise you. Let's do this. But the, 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 the next point is just timidity. Timidity or intimidation. It will stop a move of God. Timidity is like a, it's a lesser form of fear. It's a lack of confidence that causes many people to move slowly, extra carefully, or not at all. It's kind of like, I, 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 it's not that I don't believe God will do it, but I don't know if he'll do it with me. I don't want to be the first one to step out and, 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 and to, to get things going. I, I don't, I don't, I, when, when somebody else does it, then I'll go behind them and then I'll do it. Meantime, God's been speaking to you to be the one that steps out. Amen? Because of fear and, and timidity, many will deny God. Many deny the Lord. Remember Peter? Peter at Jesus' arrest? You know, Peter, Peter was great. Peter was bold as long as he could be in the flesh. 
As long as, long as it's a, fresh, a flesh move, he's good. You know, Peter, Peter talking all kinds of trash. He's slinging swords, took off the ear of a soldier and, you know, and, and all these things. And, and he's telling Jesus, I'll never leave you. I'll be by your side. I'll go to jail. I'll even die with you. you know, and, and Peter's like, and, G, and Jesus like, I don't, I don't think so, Peter. I don't think so, Peter. You're too timid. You're not ready yet. You need the Holy Ghost. Are you, you, you're not ready for this yet. And then, then he, he tells her about Peter, you know, the, uh, the enemy has asked to sift you like wheat, but I prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And when you return, that you will, I mean, God, Jesus began to prophesy over Peter at that point, you're going to fall, but you'll rise, right? You're going down, but, but you'll come back up. And when you step back up, you will be in a different position to encourage your brothers, to strengthen those who are coming along behind. So it's like, go, Peter, go. And then you realize the boldness that comes upon Peter. Peter comes out in the, in the book of Acts. He, the Holy Spirit is on him and flowing through him. And he has discovered oneness with God. I want you to grab that and understand it. He's, he's, he's discovered unity and oneness with God. And so he's preaching with signs, wonders, miracles, right? He's moving into a new place. Remember with, with uh, Ananias and Sapphira, who was uh, um, uh, Simon the Sorcerer, rather. But he's at that place where, where he's saying, you didn't lie to men, you lied to the Holy Spirit. That that's where his level of unity and oneness with God was. To be able to stand in this place. So he's preaching with signs, wonders, miracles. You see, um, that even when he backslid, there was points where Peter began to slide back and become timid again. But what happened in those times? Apostle Paul set him straight. I was stood him to his face. I set him back on track. You know, Peter's up there and Peter's acting all kind of foolish and everything towards the plans of God. And then he decides he's going to fast and pray and he falls into a trance and God gives him a vision to be bold and to get his life back on track and to accomplish the mission that God had for his life. Break that timidity, amen? amen. God, the relationships inspire and motivate in our times of hesitation. Godly relationships inspire and motivate us in times of hesitation. And the last thing that I have on my list here, I don't want to spend a lot of time here. I spend time here all the time. But it's indifference and non-responsiveness. That will stop a movement of God. Resistance kills fruit. When God is saying, this is the way, walk in the way, this is what I desire, and you are to be a part of that, but you say, no. Must be talking to everybody but me. No, I would, but I don't want to. I don't feel like it. I don't think that was a word for me. You know, God speaks so powerfully at times. And you watch how it just kind of can dissipate into an atmosphere. I said, you need to listen. Hear what's being spoken. Hear what's being preached. Hear what the word of God is. And bring it to him and say, Lord, is this something that you want me to be a part of? Is this a part of them? Because, because the idea that says, well, I already know me and I know God. And if God wanted me to know that, he would have told me that directly. That's an attitude that stops the move of God. It stops a move of God. I've seen this with people before. Where I'm like, listen, the Lord is speaking and this is what he is saying. And I had somebody right to my face go, if God wants to speak to me, he'll talk to me to my face. I said, man, they are gone in three weeks. Backsliding in three weeks. They, they, they had already made up their mind. They're not going to hear anything unless they hear from God. And they were not at a place where they're hearing from the Holy Spirit. One of the best ways to stop hearing from the Holy Spirit is stop listening to leadership and those that are placed around you. When God is beginning to speak through them and you're saying, I don't know, my pride, I'm, I'm, I'm way above that. I'm way beyond you. When you start thinking that because you have arrived on level one, that you're already on level five. I'll tell you what, man. I know people, I've seen it, man. I'll tell you what. They are way up there. They are walking in the clouds with the Lord. They spend time in the throne room of God, and yet God will still send them somebody else to speak to them. Why? Because he does not want you in the clouds. He wants your feet in the earth right now. It is time for us to be highly impactive and effective in the earth. Yeah, come on. That's all right. He's praising. He's praising. That's a first for my sermon right there, the dog barks. So. Woo, I know I'm hitting something now. Praise God. <laughs> Here, godly relationships. Listen, godly relationships want you, to go, want you to grow. Godly relationships want you to grow. They want you to be blessed. They want you to be active and bearing fruit for the kingdom of God. That's how you know it's godly. I'll tell you, if it's just about putting you down, it's probably not God. Unless you need to be put down. And you probably know if you do. Amen. 
But if you're in that place, and somebody's and they're lifting you, pulling you, drawing, showing that direction, and God is confirming this, and God does do a confirmation of word, confirmation of word, confirmation of word, and it comes from many, many, many different places. But I'll tell you what, what you receive is gold. Amen? What you receive from God is gold. Two scriptures are brought out. 1 Corinthians 12. These are gifts of the Spirit. Verse 18. It says, But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. How did you get in the body? How did you get in the body of Christ? He put you there. Where did he put you? Where he wants you. <laughs> Where he wants you. Where he has ordained for you to go. And the things that you are ordained to do. He sets you in the body of Christ, not just the local church. He set you in the body of Christ to be impactful, to bear fruit that shall remain. Verse 27, it says, Now you are the body of Christ and members individually. And God has appointed these in the church. Listen to the appointments. You ready? First apostles, second prophets, third teachers. After that. Say after that. That is a powerful phrase. First the apostles, the prophets, the teachers. Then after that is a release. After that, there's miracles, gifts of healings, helps, administrations, variety of tongues. That, there is, that, that when we are operating by anointing together, there is a powerful release. That we, we, we don't stop at apostles, prophets, and teachers. They're imparting. Everybody else... Let's get to work. Let's go to work for the kingdom of God. He says, 29, are all apostles, all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the best gifts. And I show you a more excellent way. Now watch this. Are all, everybody have all these gifts? No. Calls us to work together. Have you ever been in a place in life where you need a miracle? And God, give me the miracle. God, give me the miracle. You're a miracle working God. Yeah, you're way make a miracle work. You're a promise keeper, God. I just sing to you and I lift and I cry. Meanwhile, God has gifted somebody with a gift of miracles. God has gifted somebody with the gift of healing. But you're like, no, it's just me and God. God said, I'm building a team. You need, you need to get with the team. You need to get around the people. Earnestly desire the best gifts. And God says, I will show you a more excellent way. How many of y'all know the more excellent way? Love. It's love. The whole chapter on love. Want me to read it to you? I'm not going to. But you can go home and read that. But love is the way. Love is the key. Love is the answer. Love is the source. Love is the power. Love is the fuel. Love is the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. First John 4. Listen to what John writes here. This is powerful, and it shows you. Just before service, the Lord gave me this scripture. And it backs up everything that was in the message about breaking through these limitations. 1 John 4, 17, love has been perfected among us that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in the world. Boldness. Love conquers timidity. Verse 18. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. But he who has not been made perfect. Um, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. So what does that show me? Love conquers fear. Verse 19, we love him because he first loved us. Love is responsive. Verse 20, if someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. But he does not love his brother whom he has seen. How can he love God whom he has not seen? And this commandment we have from him, that he who loves God must also love his brother. Love is responsive. Love is not indifferent to the things of God. Right. We're talking about tearing down the things that would hinder or bring to a halt a movement of God 
and I believe there's a movement that's coming. I believe it started and stopped, and it started and it stopped, and it has started and it has stopped. But today I'm believing to turn the key, get it going, and sustain it the way God shows us to, by love and godly relationship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray.